Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're in Baytul Aman, Masjid in East London here. Alhamdulillah, this is the Quran Revision Day uh, 2024, 6th of July. Alhamdulillah, uh, we've just done Salat al Dhuhr and some of the students who started at Salat al Fajr have already finished the Khasma of the Quran. You can see behind people are revising the Quran from memory. Uh, some are doing five Jews, ten Jews, and, and twenty Jews, and etc. And this is a project, mashallah, that's been running for uh, a few years, starting from East London, alhamdulillah, and now it's spread throughout the country. Revising the Quran in one sitting requires extra memory, extra revision, extra hard work to make uh, their, uh, their, their memory even stronger, solid. Uh, and it's been carrying, it's been continuing for a few years now in East London, alhamdulillah. And uh, it, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. The, the angelic environment, house of Allah, the book of Allah being recited, revised, it's absolutely amazing, alhamdulillah, and this is a true exhibition of Allah's promise that indeed we have revealed the Quran and we shall preserve it. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ we have made the Quran easy to memorize, easy to remember. So is there anybody that will that effort in mudakir that will try to make the effort to memorize and to revise and to retain? And Allah said also, This is the book in which there is no doubt. So the Quran is mutawatir and sent down to us generation by generation since the Prophet. And this is the preservation of the Quran. In, through gatherings like this, Alhamdulillah, what a great ni'ma for this masjid, for this community. My name is Safwan Shahid. I'm 10 years old, and today I have officially completed my first ever Quran revision. Um, I started off at, after Fajr Salah for the block, and we registered, and from there, and from that time, we um, read and read. We had some, we had a few breaks in the middle, and um, Alhamdulillah, I have revised strongly two juzes of the Quran. This is the book 
that we have revealed to you in order to take people from darkness, which means that people without Quran are living in what? In darkness. Ask yourself, my dear brother, my dear sister, how much I am connected to the Quran. If you want to know whether you are a good Muslim or a bad Muslim, not just a Muslim, if you want to know whether you are a good Muslim or a bad Muslim, ask yourself how much I read Quran on a daily basis. How much of what I read I understand. And how much of what I understand I implement. And then how much of what I implement I call people. Alhamdulillah, since Salat al Fajr today, it's now 4 p.m. since Salat al-Fajr we've been here. Uh, teachers and students alike, old and young, uh, reciting the Qur'an uh, from what we have memorized and correcting each other's recitations. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful atmosphere and really one of the pertinent ahadith that come to mind when I come to a gathering like this, an amazing event like this, is the one where our Prophet ﷺ mentioned that these gatherings were uh, in the house of Allah, where the Quran is recited and studied amongst the people. These are gatherings where the mercy of Allah Azzawajal descends. The angels surround these gatherings. The sakina, the tranquility descends as well. And Allah Azzawajal mentions us by name, every single person in this gathering, uh, to his closest angels. Uh, and Allah Azzawajal is proud of us. And he's very happy with us, rejoicing the fact that we are spending time in these gatherings. So Alhamdulillah, this is one of the amazing ahadith that come to mind uh, when I come to an event like this. Alhamdulillah, the day has been a success so far. Uh, we have already had one completion of the Qur'an and we will inshallah uh, have a number, number of other students completing the Qur'an and others who are completing 15 juz, mashallah, or 10 juz of the Qur'an or 5 or even less. But the point is, that it's not about the amount, it's the atmosphere we're creating, this Qur'anic environment and being recipients of those virtues mentioned in the hadith. So we ask Allah Azza wa to accept it from us uh, and facilitate many more gatherings like this uh, in our locality and across the country and perhaps even in Europe and the rest of the world, inshallah. Barakallah wa feekum. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا great thing what you do with the Quran after you've learnt it is to recite it in Salah. Do you know that? Yeah? Everyone knows that, right? You, read, you learn the Quran, why do we learn it? To pray in Salah, didn't it? That's why we learn the Quran. That's why we learn Surahs, yeah? No? Okay, how many people over here know the Amma Bara? Put your hands up. Amma, Amma. Everybody? I can see most hands going up, yes? Most hands going up. Okay. Okay. How many people over here in their salat have recited Surah Alaq? They call it Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. Come on, hands. How many have actually recited Surah Alaq in their salat? Besides Taraweeh, yeah? <laughs> Not Taraweeh. In your salat, you pray Surah Alaq. So, how come the others, when you've learned Surah Alaq by heart, how come you never recited it in your salat ever? Why not? You're scared of the sajda. <laughs> scared that you're gonna have to do the sajda, yes? What's the what? Sajda is like the closest position we can be to Allah, isn't it? 
So why would you not want to do an extra sajda? It's like you think that I want to pray that surah because I want to do an extra sajda. Not that I don't want to pray it because I'd have to do sajda. It's the total wrong and opposite mentality, isn't it? Does that make sense? We should be wanting to pray. Now I want to pray surah sajda. I want to pray surah Allah. I want to pray the ayats of sajda so I can do extra sajda to Allah in my salat. You know? So we should be that mentality, right? It's because, you know, when we were younger, I was like, oh, no, no, don't say loud when you're in class so that because the other classes, big members would have to do such that. So you become like, without knowing subconsciously, you kind of have this kind of ideology regarding such that is. But it's not like that, is it? Right? So we're going to come out of that, right? So read surah, surahs that you, you've learnt by heart. The reason you've learnt it is so that you can lengthen your prayer. And remember, what you pray in salat, obviously we're trying to, do this whole day here to try to preserve our Quran, isn't it? What's the best way to preserve your Quran? Reading in Salat, and everyone knows, everybody that knows here, what you pray in your Salat stays solid, isn't it? It's just that some amazing connection that Salat has with Quran. You sitting at home, there's nothing for you to feel despondent about. Start your Quranic journey now. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala tells us about the Quran that the Quran isn't some sort of Cryptic text which only a few can understand. Allah tells us, Allah is addressing the disbelievers and Allah is telling them that do they, do they not ponder over the Quran or is it that they have locks off from their hearts? Let us all work, my dear brothers and sisters, towards trying to build a connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three simple tips. Our connection with the Quran can be in three ways. Number one, we should try to build a connection with the Quran in terms of reciting it. Number two, in terms of trying to understand it. And number three, in terms of trying to bring a new portion of the Quran into our life. The last thing, my dear brothers and sisters, we want is those same surahs, that same alam tara that we learn in maktab, we die with it and we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. Let us become Muslims of big, uh, uh, let, 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 us, let us become Muslims who have big intentions. There are accounts where even the people, if they didn't understand Arabic, they didn't understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but just their habits of reciting the Quran, their habits of reading the Quran, their engagement with the Quran on a daily basis, those people, they were not removed from their deen. It was not possible for any force to remove them from their deen. And very unique factor today in people of Gaza is the Quran. Very unique factor. You know, since the October, now it's been nine months. And you know, they've been out of their normal homes, subhanAllah. Those homes which are not broken down, they don't belong to, they, on, the, the residents of the homes, they don't live there. Everybody lives in that house. You, you, you get what I mean? There are millions, whole, whole population is out of their homes. Very few homes remaining, who lives in there? Not the occupant, not the owner of the house, who lives in there? Any ladies. Any elderly women, they are living there. SubhanAllah, they are sharing that with everybody. In that environment, I've just read a report on Friday, yesterday, that in this last nine months, 1,000 people have become hafiz. This is their attachment with the Quran, under bombing. They don't have food. They don't, they're not making excuses that we don't have food, we don't have madrasa, we don't have masjid. We are under bombing. How can we go on, go on to learn Quran? And subhanAllah, we have to salute them, we have to respect them, that there are individuals, ulama, hafaz, who facilitated this under bombing, subhanAllah. Being quick is shaitan's habit. Al-ujilatu min shaitan right? Being quick is from, it's, it's a habit of shaitan. So if you want perfection, if you want good, if you want something that lasts long lifetime, it has to be in slow steps. You cannot, you, can, you cannot treat learning Quran or learning Deen like you do GCSE revision last three, four weeks, go through past papers and you'll make it. No, if, if you treat like that anything to do with Islam, whether it's Alimiya program, whether it's, it's learning Islamic studies or whether anything, in that way, it, it will not work. It will not work. Uh, because we, whatever we learn about Islam, it should be strong. It should be forever. It's not to just pass the exams.
It should be forever, subhanAllah. Yeah, we're coming to the end of the Quran originally where people are either finishing their khatmas of the Quran or they're completing the amount that they were selected for, 5 is that, 10 is that, 15, 30. So Alhamdulillah, it's been an amazing day. Thank you so much to the QRD team, to the volunteers. They've been absolutely amazing, super helpful and super supportive, inshallah. May Allah accept it from all of us, inshallah. May Allah make us people of the Ahlul Quran. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما وَيَدْعُ الْإِنْسَانُ وَيَدْعُ الْإِنْسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَاءَهُ بِالْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ عَجُولًا The Qur'an is multifaceted. The Qur'an is not just for reading. Alhamdulillah, this is great that we're even reading it, memorizing it, and reviewing it, and revising it. But that's not the only thing. There are so many facets of the Qur'an that this is only the beginning. What do I mean by that? Just in case somebody thinks that, mashallah, I've read all day long, which is a major achievement, alhamdulillah. And you finish the Qur'an in so many number of hours. That definitely is in itself a wonderful miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you can do it from memory. However, for those people, I want to say that this is not the end. There is so many more stages. So there is the meaning of the Quran. Essentially, the Quran is a message, an email or a WhatsApp message that has been sent by Allah to us. Most of us here probably don't understand Arabic. Which means, mashallah, we're reading the Quran, but we're not understanding what Allah's message is to us. So the next step that we have to take is by the translation multiple translations available and literally start reading even this one page a day translation so along with your reading your revising of your memorization start reading one or two pages a day for reflection you will get hooked within a few days you'll start understanding how Allah speaks to us what he wants from us what he dislikes what he likes how he deals with people how he's dealt with people what he's prepared for people how he warns people you will exactly see who Allah is. Otherwise, if you don't know who Allah is, our Iman can't become stronger. The only way to develop a love for Allah and a strength in our Iman is by knowing why we're worshiping and who we're worshiping. All purpose of all of this is Allah. And have uh, any of you read reviews of Allah to find out what it is? When you want to buy a new phone, have you read reviews? Anybody read reviews about Allah? Like where? Amazon? No? The best place to read reviews about Allah or to reveal about Allah is by through His own speech, which is the Quran, which mashallah many of us have in our hearts. Allah. Many of us have it in our hearts. But imagine on the day of judgment, Allah says to us, Did you read that message I sent to you? It's like, man, I had it, I didn't even memorize it, but I didn't bother translating it. I didn't bother understanding what you said. It sounded cool. I used to listen to it for hours. Every time I got in the car, it's on. I've listened to hundreds of Qur'an reading. And I prefer, you know, Shaykh Ramidi and Shaykh this and Shaykh that. Man, I didn't bother understanding what it meant. Can you understand how serious that sounds now and it didn't sound so serious before? Like we've been reading for years. We've memorized it. We don't always that even once we haven't been from cover to cover. At least once, let me see what he says. Start now, it's not too late. So really, that is the next step, inshallah, for us. Get a translation at your own leisure, not to become muftis, not to debate. Not to give fatwas, but to understand and recognize your Lord. Whose words are you reading? So on the Day of Judgment, yes, Allah, I did read that message. I 
you read that message. You just get hooked up. May Allah bless and accept everyone that's involved and everyone that's behind the project. May Allah grant success and, uh, and and make it make it inshallah reach all four corners of the world. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Zakum Allah khairu wa salam alaykum.